the 25th of January. So we're almost done with summer. We've got one more month left. And at this time of the year, I am actually quite ready for autumn. The bugs are out in full force and most of our stuff is so we've almost come to the end of its cropping. My name is Bridget and this is the Sherwood Urban Farm. So today's video, we're going to do a garden tour and harvest and my summer garden. And let's see what's still left over in the garden. A lot of the stuff is finished cropping already. But there are some um, surprises that I didn't think would be there. So let's have a look. Come. We'll start with my raised beds. I just love my raised beds. You must be so tired of hearing me saying that. But I really love my raised beds. They have performed so well. And I've thought about it like it must be because they, they're mostly just compost. So they've got all the nutrients that they need. And that's brought me to think, possibly, I'm going to change the way that I put compost down. Not really put compost down, but the way that I'm going to plant things. I think what I, and I've started doing it already, when I'm planting something new, I'm going to dig a hole, I'm going to fill the hole with compost, and then I'm going to plant into that. So when I talk about no dig, I'm meaning like, don't till the soil over and don't mix the compost in. But I'm going to give it a go and I'll let you know how that goes. Anyways, here we are. This is the butternut that in the last video was busy cascading down there. And then I thought, okay, it's done. Um, we got some rain unexpectedly. We've had more rain this January than we had last January, which is fantastic. And you can see it in the growth. So now I've sort of redirected the vines to grow this way over because these things have finished cropping on that well, that side however at this time of the year the fruit flies are not the fruit flies those pumpkin flies they look like fruit flies to me they look like the same thing those little brown jobs with the yellow with those wings that stand out like that they aren't so i've lost about four recently um half developed butternut in this bed from being stung and then when you open it up it's just like squirming with their lava it's so gross so what i did was i um hauled out the spinosad uh, fruit fly pumpkin fly bait and i sprayed that underneath the leaves so i'm hoping that that's going to sort out my problem i'll do it again in seven in seven days because i did that the other day so if we come around on this side so we have a look here, you can see these leaves are massive, they're bigger than they were when at the, the beginning of the season. And But unfortunately, I've only got two, um, if you come in here and you have a look, there's only two butternut on this plant. However, they are much bigger than what they were in the first flush that it had. Um, it's now, it's producing some male flowers, but there's no female flowers, so that's a bit unfortunate. On this side, we have a look. Here's another thing, which is interesting. So I had two cucumber plants that I planted here. Here's the one. And they died back. They almost completely died back. And here's the other one. I cut them back. And look, here they're going again. Incredible. I've also had a terrible go of the um, red spider mites this year. Oh, man. But I sprayed them with neem oil, and that seemed to have helped. Also, I jet them with the, with the hose. Then I'll take the leaves, yeah, on cucurbits. I spray the bejeebas out of them. And look, there we go. You're going to get, um, what's that stuff called? What's that stuff called again? Powdery mildew. You're going to get it. You're just going to get it, and that's what it is. I just cut those leaves off, and then it makes it... Um, produce more fresh leaves and it works well so this here i've broken the rules as well in this bed i have watermelon two, two watermelon plants i've got two um cantaloupes and i've got four um cucumber plants all in this bed and they're all over the place i have got a, a, a support all the way around so that I don't really want it to actually come down on the ground like that because um, the rabbits and if the ducks get out, they love to go at the rooftops there. 
So, let's see, what have we got here? Here's some cucumber starting there as well. I harvested, when was it, two days ago, the melons that were in here. And the one gave a horrible surprise because I wasn't sure when to harvest because I've never had success with melons. And it was completely rotten. Then the other one was half rotten. And then there was one beautiful cantaloupe. We call it spanspec. Spun spec. Um, let's see if there's anything to be harvested in here. I'm sure there's. Oh, this is a little watermelon developing here. Actually, come and look on this side. Look at this. Let's take its little jacket off quickly. A watermelon. I hope it's going to get bigger than this because it grew like great guns and then it sort of seems to have slowed down a bit. I cover it because of the uh, pumpkin fly, fruit fly, whatever one it is. Oh, I'll tie that on again. So yeah, yeah, you can see this is a cucumber that's coming. Then I just have it it's actually dragged down now by this watermelon. But if you look over here, there's some more cucumbers and there's another one there. They sort of halted a bit. I mean, we were harvesting like continuously, but it seems it slowed down a bit. Oh, but wait. It's, um, what do you think of this apron? Guys, this is a game changer. See here? I put in these my uh, cutters. I've got all my string and stuff here. On this side, I've got my little protective nest, net bags, and then I can stick my phone in there. Anyways. So, get the cutters out, and if you come in here, here's a little cucumber. So this is also interesting, they've been doing this lately. They're not, it's almost like they, they're not rounding, they're not developing properly there. So I can just pop that in my nice little harvesting apron. Oh, here's a um, Spanish melon. So I also had, I had, how many, we ended up having four Spanish melon on that bed. And I, I waited too long, and two of them, they went rotten because I didn't harvest them enough. But And they also didn't get as big as the ones in the shop. Um, they only got about this big, but still, they tasted bad. Uh, I'm not going to harvest this one. I need rather just put this away. Here we go. Look at that. Here's another one. It's just that they don't get very big in my garden. Let's have a look what it looks like. Come on. It's round. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be round. They're supposed to be oval. Anyways, I'll leave it here. Cover it up. Until it gets a little bit bigger. Oh, and this. This is my eggplant aubergine uh, raised bed. I have also got some cucumbers in here. But if you take a look at this. Oh, shame. That took such strain with um, red spider mites because if you don't if you don't act quickly on those things they just take over that I actually lost a plant that was in the corner here but these ones have recovered nicely um, I, I just spray them every now and then with jet of water under the leaves but over here let me have a look look at that isn't that a beaut so we'll take that oh, I mean I've got a whole whack in the fridge as well I didn't expect it to grow this well because previously when I've grown eggplant they just haven't done that well and even the ones in the in the main garden they haven't done that well it's they're against the wall and I figured they should be fine um, with the heat but the sweet potato is taking over there but, but I'll show you that in a minute oh look there's another cucumber that we can harvest here I take into putting them putting them in bags on this side because I lost a couple of cucumbers here. Um, oh, I may as well just cut it off. Ah, oh, that's a nice one. See now, that's how it's supposed to look. So I'm not sure why it's doing that funny sharp thing. This one's not ready yet. Okay. If you have a look here, some more eggplants. 
and I'm not sure these ones might be a bit of a dwarf I've had it before because I bought these one from Merlin and the previous ones I bought from Merlin they had um, they were the, like a little dwarf variety wait what have we got here oh let me tell you about this so this tomato was a volunteer which I showed in a previous video and it grew out the side you can see it comes out the side here there oh this is it so, and then it finished fruiting and I thought okay it's done no it wasn't here it is again and look at it I must tie this up but it is just amazing if you come and look at it here look at all of these inside the little bag look at that and there's some more developing there and then I've got another little baggie there, but I'm not, it's same, looks like that. I'm not going to open that one up. I close them mainly for the mouse birds. Mouse birds love the tomatoes. They do wait for them to at least start blushing before they do their attack, but I figured I'll just close it up now anyway. Then here's another butternut that was here in the beginning of the growing season. And I also thought, oh, it's done. No, it's not. Look at this. Here's. I don't think this is going to grow any bigger. I actually wonder if I shouldn't just harvest them. There's these two. Then they can... Hmm. No. I'm going to go harvest those ones over there. So this is from a plant that's in here. I also have okra, guys. Okra. Check it out. This tiddly little plant. It should be much bigger. But it's got two fruit on it. I don't actually know what to do with okra. Then over here are my volunteer yellow peppers but they are the, I mean they had loads of fruit and then the fruit got stung see look at that bother you see now and then it it goes like this yuck I'll give that to the chickens let's see if I can throw it for them yeah okay and then so now this plant is it this one coming around no that's this one this one was also had died back and now it is given three there were a lot more but then they got stuck three butternut i'm going to actually harvest this one because i don't think it's going to get any bigger than this and it's already uh it's starting what they say that thing about the the tendril closest to it must have died back oh it hasn't maybe i shouldn't Maybe I should just leave it. I don't think I'm going to leave it. But I am going to harvest. If you come around that side. Look at this, guys. Yo. I haven't had such nice... Well, I hope it's going to be nice on the inside. I harvested one the other day. And then the seeds were black on the inside. And then it didn't taste nice. And I'm not sure why I did that. But we'll put that in. Here's another one. Look at that. Well, I suppose it could have maybe stayed a bit longer. But anyways, I'm going to harvest that like that now. Right. So, the red spider mites had a proper go at, at my um, bush beans. These are the Star 2000 bush beans. Um, you can see the damage that they've done here. Look at that. I have sprayed, so then they're not here anymore. I sprayed with the neem. And then also jetting them with the water. But these guys are amazing as well because... Let's put that away. Just look at... If you look at this. Look at that. Hey? I mean, it's taking strain with the, the spider mark, but it didn't stop its production. So we'll take some of these as well. I think we'll we'll have them fresh. I have uh, blanched and frozen a whole lot of it, but it's not as nice as when you have them fresh. Um, over here, if you have a look, I thought I would plant some more before the season was over of these bush beans. The wind was howling yesterday, so it now unfortunately has snapped that one off. Or actually, it looks like something ate it. Bother! I lost so many to cutworm. So if you scratch in here, then you normally find them. So what I did do is, with these ones, that's why they've survived, I stuck these, um, if you have a look in there, 
I stuck these things in here. This is just a Coke bottle that I cut up, and that works. It stops them from being able to, to come in. But they normally, you can find them underneath here, but that sort of works. I didn't do it with my onions, and I had, I had planted up onions fully here. And then this is the last one, but it looks like it's actually also been nailed by the cutworms. Ugh, this year. I've never had cutworms before in my life. But this year, I had a double dose, a triple dose. They just took over in this bed. Right. So on the outside of the bed, I have a pepper dew, which I thought was not a pepper dew. I thought this was a um, chili pepper, but it turns out to be a pepper dew. And they really are squished in here. I've got four plants in this uh, planter. And then, yep, there you go. They, they're starting to, to get their color already. And I'm, like, I'm really, the, the second year, I found with um, most of your capsicums, they seem to perform better on the second year, especially the, the chilies and the pepper dews. And this bed, I've got another, uh, another two chili plants. These ones seem to be a little bit different to those ones. See, they got, ooh, they got rounded. I wonder if you can still use this. Well, that's a pity. Anyways, we'll stick that in there. We'll just start here with my tomatoes. So these yellow cocktail tomatoes have been amazing. They just fruit and fruit. And you can see the way this, this one has come down. See, and then I've just I sort of lowered it down. I can actually just train it up. I must lower it again. Look at that. And it's still growing strong. Look at the fruit. We can take this one. Where's my cutters? Ooh. Have a look at this. Hey, isn't that beautiful? And I mean, these ones are oh, no worries. There was a stink bug inside. Ah, that sometimes happens. Anyways, they're still beautiful. And they taste amazing. I'm going to eat one. Mm -hmm. mm. Them. These yellow ones. And these ones. These ones are Spanish Santas. They are by far the best. In the, in the flower boxes, which I didn't show you now. They're by the shed. Or the orange ones. Oh, they're not so nice. But those ones are amazing. Let's see if we've got... No, these ones are not ready yet. In this bed over here, I've got some more chili. So last year I planted these chili plants from seed. I sowed them from seed. And then they um, they gave a couple of chilies. And then I thought, ah, this, is, this isn't really working out. And then I was going to take them all out. And I actually did take some out. And then I remembered, let's just leave them for a bit. And let's just see how they do this year. And look at it. If you come and have a look at this, I mean, this, these bushes are just jamming with all the the chilies. I'm going to make a sweet a chili and gooseberry sauce again. Oh, that was divine last year. Oh, this one has fallen over. We had such winds yesterday. Um, this is my kale. We don't eat kale. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know don't eat kale but the animals just love it but you can see already now the aphids are oh come and look at this oh man isn't that just so disgusting the grossest sight ever so they're out and about but these were doing so well and they were looking so beautiful my potatoes were a disaster these are potatoes that i just saved from the shop and they started out and they looked amazing but now they have all these marks on it and I don't think I'm even going to get any potatoes. And what's causing that is the, um, there's a kind of ladybug, but it was the larva of the ladybug. So I was looking out for the ladybug, but the, the larva was underneath the leaves and it was just, there were just hundreds and hundreds of them. And, and they just, I don't think I'm going to get anything from that. But this is maize. And it's non-GMO maize, which I got from a friend. But I noticed now, actually, stock is also makes non-GMO maize. But anyway, so here it is. I mean, look how tall it is. There were, there were three that were even taller. 
but then they were starting to tassel but they weren't making any ears so then i thought after doing a bit of research online that they planted too closely together so obviously this is not the way you do maize as you do sweet corn and so i yanked out those three plants and then just after that and i made a reel and a guy on, Insta uh, well, a guy on instagram comments he says just wait just be patient so i did oh well so now i've lost the best plants so it is but here they are look at that they i mean wow look at that is that normal well i'm hoping to have at least be able to make one bowl of milli meal from my my maize and they're doing great and then this is sweet corn and i didn't expect this because i planted them after i had planted the maize so i didn't expect the sweet corn and the maize to be tasseling at the same time i did hand pollinate this one so i hope oh look 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 there's a um praying mantis oh i love those so um i have hand pollinated this one just because i'm concerned that i'm going to get cross pollination now because i really i mean i planted them so much later than these ones but then they shot up and look how tall they are i've never had sweet corn getting this tall either here's some more of my potatoes now i think the problem with these ones is that i didn't water it enough and there was a couple of very very hot days and this this soil is very sandy and yeah you can see already and i had um i mean down there it's it's wet but it dries out a lot so i think either it was the hot very hot days which um made it go brown like that and then the tops went down or it was that i just didn't water them enough which is really unfortunate if it was my fault because i could have controlled that that sad over here i've got beetroot which i'm oh yo it's been in here for months and there are a couple of beetroot but i don't want to harvest them when they're that small i want to see if by autumn maybe they will get a little bit bigger and then on this side here are some more pepper dew plants so this is their first year in in the soil i bought them as seedlings and i mean you can see they're already starting to um to blossom and they will make their fruit but next year they are going to they're going to perform they're going to be so big they'll just take up this whole thing so what i will do is i'll cut them back um in autumn after they've finished and then i will um then they will shoot up new growth and normally then they will do much better on the second season so the spanish santa like i said earlier are just amazing they taste so nice but obviously now at the end of their days um they, but they're still producing even if it's small I don't mind. Um, I'll just take these tiny little things off here. The um, tutor, what's the tutor moth? Um, it is called the leaf miner. That is out again at full force. So I'm going to have to spray with some neem. It's even in the tomatoes in the greenhouse, which is unfortunate. But there are some tomatoes here, which I'm just going to quickly get. Oops. <laughs> some have now dropped before i could get them but i'll even take them like this and ripen them on the windowsill yeah in this bed i haven't got anything growing except the last of the the big red tomatoes which i'm going to harvest today and then um i actually thought i was going to pull them all out some of them did die back but now i see this one look it's already flowering again so i'm going to give that one a go but this one has definitely had seen better days so i'm just going to harvest this one And I think, I think this one has seen better days. I mean, look, it's full of powdery mildew. That's normally a sign when the plant has just had enough now. I'll take that as well. So there it is. A little bit of holes there. Maybe I'll make a sauce with these. Now they actually, I put the bag on late and I think they had already been um, stung by the stink bugs. The shield bugs is another name, but at least they don't they don't lay their eggs in here, and then it like it's full of worms. They just seem to suck the sap and then they make those marks. So it doesn't actually damage the fruit, which is better, but it still doesn't look so nice. And then all along the wall, I have sweet potatoes. This bed full of sweet potatoes. 
these um, sweet corn, they also struggled along a bit. But they're coming on. Maybe I'll even get a couple of sweet corn from them. I had planted a lot more, but only these ones have germinated. And then, I mean, that one at the back just never performed. I've noticed that when you have the sweet corn on the sides, they don't seem to, um, the one, the plants on the side, they always seem to be these tiddly little things. And the ones sort of more in the middle of the bed are the bigger ones. And then if you look here, these are, these um, eggplants were planted at the same time as the ones in the raised beds. And they just, I mean, this one hasn't even, maybe it's because it's got too much foliage around it, but it's not like the sweet potatoes are rooting there. So I, I don't know, there's one, here's a tiny little eggplant coming along on this plant. But they just are not performing like the ones in my um, raised beds. On this side, this is my three sisters bed. Here I had the sweet corn, which we ate, we probably got 12 years of sweet corn from this. And then um, we've got the butternut that's coming through. It's actually gone over the fence there. And I'm going to take you out to that side. That's a bit of like a little bit of a junk heap where we store stuff and that. But there's some butternut that I'm going to harvest today. And then the, I left the I left the, the sweet corn stalks in because the beans are growing on it. So look at that. I suppose we can actually harvest these beans now. Let's take these ones. It's an unusual purple one. But my, my friend who gave it to me, she was most disappointed that once you've cooked it, it goes green. So then it loses its purple flair. And of course... The last sunflower alternate there for you. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And these are perennial beans. So you can see this is just growing everywhere. It's now starting to flower a bit. But I haven't had... Oh, wait. No. Look at that. Oh, look. There's a stink bug. I'll just kill that with it. But here, here's the first ones. That's very interesting looking. So we'll see how that turns out. I think those ones will have to be for when you, you know, for drying. Here's one. Here's a nice size, isn't it? Let's get in there. Yeah, look at that. This is this is the classic. So the tendril had dried off. So this one is definitely ready to be harvested. Now what's very interesting is the butternut that grew in the here in the main garden i mean look at the size of these things they are considerably bigger than the ones that i got in the raised bed so i'm confused that's all i can say let's have a look oh that's a beauty eh? i'm not going to put this in my apron i'll just put this there because there's on the other side in the Okay, please excuse this mess, but this is where we store pipes and corrugated metal and whatever. I don't know if you can come, if you can see here. Yeah. There's another whopper. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Sure, that's beautiful. Put it on the on the pipes and then there's one more. Just stick in there. Sure. Okay. That's a beauty. Oh, I wonder why I did that. That's interesting. Hmm. Anyways, I'm sure it's still fine. I've still got some carrots from this one row of carrots that I planted. Um, I'm just going to see if there's some that I can harvest. Oh, uh, here we go. Because I actually want to plant this bed up with carrots. I just haven't gotten there. Then I'll plant them in rows that way. Let's see. Oh, that one's a little bit small. 
sure. The ground's dry, I need to water again. Nice. I'll leave those ones, they're still small. Yeah, I think I'll leave the rest. There you go. I've got I've got still some in the kitchen as well, so I don't, I don't want to take the lot, all of them um, because I still have some in the kitchen. So this is the front garden. We started planting in the front garden now as well. I cleared this bed out. Um, it used to have Cape honeysuckle in it, and we've planted. I've moved in the um, this is the little Nachi clementine that was in the pot in the in the vegetable garden. And then over there we've got my daughter's planted some Roma tomatoes. They're starting to fruit. And then the thing is though, with this part of the garden, we kind of forget to water it. So that is a that that impacts how well it's going to perform. Um her cucumbers, well there is still a cucumber there, but um, you can see it's, it needs water, it's a little bit droopy, the leaves. Then lastly, this is my mulberry tree. When I planted it, it was just this stick. And that was a few months ago, so it was shot out. I'm going to keep it as a bush. I don't want a big tree here. I don't want too much shade into the front garden. And I just don't want it to get out of control. So even this, this um, clementine and the mulberry i'm just going to keep them sort of as like little bushes no no higher than that for sure well guys thanks so much for watching the video all the way to the end and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned something as i was harvesting and maybe something you saw was useful to you and if it was then please like and subscribe and share with your friends and i hope you have a fabulous day further